Welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing coronary artery disease. Okay, right, uh, so what we now want to start discussing is firstly the investigation or another investigation that you can have for coronary artery disease uh, and then I want to actually start discussing the treatment for coronary artery disease and we'll start off with the treatment for stable angina pectoris and then we'll go on to the treatment for myocardial infarction and we'll cover both the drug treatment and also the more invasive treatments such as percutaneous coronary intervention uh, and also uh, coronary artery bypass grafting. Okay, but first thing I want to uh, talk about another uh, investigation that can be done into uh, coronary artery disease. And this is an investigation that will allow you to find specifically which uh, coronary artery it is that has got the blockage in it. Okay, and this investigation that I want to talk about is what's known as coronary angiography. Okay, so angiography, angio means pertaining to blood vessels, graphy means imaging, so we're going to be imaging blood vessels, and coronary angiography specifically means uh, imaging the coronary blood vessels. Okay, so the way this is going to work is we're going to uh, do an x-ray that's going to be able to show us the coronary arteries. Uh, now, normally an x-ray would not be able to show you the coronary arteries. Um, but what you can do is you can inject into the coronary arteries a radio-opaque dye, which is a molecule which will absorb x-rays. So I'm sh assuming that you are familiar with the concept of an x-ray. The concept of an x-ray is that uh, you have uh, a device that will emit x-rays and then on the other side of the patient, so I'll just go over the basic principle of an x-ray machine. Okay, so you're going to have an emitter and a detector and you'll put whichever portion of the body you want to have a look at in between the emitter and the detector. So let's have this as the emitter and this as the detector here. Okay, And the principle is then that the emitter will fire x-rays, it will generate x-rays which will then be detected by the detector and you can put some portion of the body in here, so let's say we've got an arm and through certain tissues uh, the x-rays will just pass easily and through other tissues they won't and they'll be absorbed. Okay, so through bone for instance, the x-rays do not get through bone, uh, a lot of them are absorbed. And then what you'll do is you'll form a picture by uh, looking at the x-rays that actually get through the tissue and arrive at the detector here. And areas where you're getting very few x-rays arriving because you've had absorption at that corresponding portion of tissue above it, uh, those will show up white on the uh, x-ray diagram, whereas uh, the portions where you're getting lots of x-rays coming through, those will show up as black on the radiograph. Okay, right, so that's the basic picture of an x-ray, and what we're going to do is we're going to take an x-ray of the heart, and we would like the coronary blood vessels to actually show up white on this x-ray. And in order to do that, we need to inject into the coronary blood vessels some radio-opaque dye, so that's the key word here, radio-opaque, uh, and I'm not totally sure whether it has two O's or just one. I'll go for one. Okay, radio-opaque. So uh, this is going to be something which is going to absorb uh, the x-rays. So a radio-opaque dye is what you're going to use. So what you need to do is somehow inject into the coronary arteries this radio-opaque dye, which is just lots of molecules going into the uh, blood in that coronary artery, and these will absorb x-rays. And therefore, when the x-rays pass through the coronary blood vessels, once they've now had the radio-opaque dye injected into them, they're going to be absorbed, and therefore it's going to show up white on the, uh, well, on the x-ray uh, diagram afterwards. Right, uh, so now all that's left to explain is how do they actually get this radio-opaque dye into uh, the coronary arteries? Well, this is rather uh, ingenious. What they do is they go in through another blood vessel, a superficial blood vessel, and they can either use uh, the radio artery in the arm or the femoral artery in the leg. Now, the femoral artery, uh, it's an easier operation because it's easier to guide the tube that's going to inject in the dye back up to the heart and going into the coronary arteries in that case. Uh, the radio artery is preferable on the other hand because it's a smaller artery and therefore uh, 
you, well, you'd rather stick a tube into a smaller artery than a large artery, such as the femoral artery. Now, I'll just remind you of the positions then of these two uh, important arteries. So we'll start off with the femoral artery. So the femoral artery is a branch of well, it's the continuation of the external iliac artery, which itself is a branch of the common iliac artery. So, beginning with the aorta then, uh, the aorta, of course, ascends upwards into a loop after it comes out of the heart. So, here is the aorta continuing on from the left ventricle, which would be down here. It ascends upwards, so this is the ascending aorta. Then you've got the aortic loop here. Okay, and then it descends down at the back of the uh, thoracic cavity here. So this is the continuation of the, f well, this is the descending aorta here. And it continues on down into the abdominal cavity. And then uh, it splits in the abdominal cavity into two major branches down here. Okay, so all of this, this is was the aortic arch up here. Okay, then we had the thoracic descending aorta, the abdominal descending aorta, and that's split into two blood vessels, and these two blood vessels are known as the common iliac arteries. Okay, spelt like so. And of course you've got a left and a right common iliac artery, so this will be the left common iliac artery, and this will be the right common iliac artery. And then what happens is these common iliac arteries are going to split into one artery that will go backwards, like so, which is known as the internal iliac artery, and one that will go forwards, which is known as the external iliac artery. Okay, so I'll label this up on the uh, left-hand side here. So this one is the internal iliac artery, okay, going backwards towards uh, the back of the pelvic bone here, okay, because we're now sort of at the level of the pelvic bone here, so you'd have the uh, iliac bones behind here and the sacrum sort of behind here. Okay, so this is the internal iliac artery. Okay, and then going outwards uh, towards the anterior face of your body here, uh, towards um, the pubic region, uh, this is the external iliac artery. And the external iliac artery is then going to pass underneath the inguinal ligament, which runs between the anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic tubercle. And then after it's gone underneath the inguinal ligament, it will be known as the femoral artery. So this is the external iliac artery. So now to mark on the inguinal ligament, so if we have the front of the pelvic bone here, so here are the pubic bones, like so, Okay, and if I mark on the inguinal ligaments here, so here's the left inguinal ligament, here's the right inguinal ligament, and they go up to the anterior superior iliac spines of the pelv iliac bone of the pelvic bones uh, back up here. Okay, and of course you can feel the inguinal ligament, so I'll just label this up as the inguinal ligament. And then once the uh, external iliac artery passes underneath the inguinal ligament, it's then called the femoral artery. So here, the continuation of this, this is the femoral artery, and this is obviously the right femoral artery, but you'd also have a left femoral artery. And it's the artery that's going into your leg, this is now going into your leg, to supply the lower limb. Okay, so, and I, of course I should really be calling it the lower limb rather than leg, it's going into the thigh. Strictly speaking, in anatomy, the leg means uh, the, um, well, the portion made by the tibia and the fibula, uh, not the thigh. Um, the, I should say the lower limb rather than the leg. Okay, so this is this is the femoral artery, and the basic principle of what we can do is we can put in a tube into the femoral artery, guide this tube all the way back up uh, the aorta here, around the aortic arch, and then you can guide it into uh, the coronary arteries, either the right coronary artery or the left coronary artery, and then you can inject up your tube the uh, radio-opaque dye, and then you can do your x-ray and see the coronary arteries, whichever one you have put the dye into. And of course, why is this brilliant? Well, of course, it will be very obvious if one of them has a stenosis in. If one of them has an atherosclerotic plaque, what will the artery actually look like once you've done this? Well, it will look kind of like this. This would be a normal artery, like so, showing up nice and white. And then if one's got a stenosis, it might look like this. Okay, there might be a 
large portion of atherosclerotic plaque here. This bit will appear dark, and then the white bit will be really thin, like so. So you'll be able to see stenosis of the coronary arteries very well on a coronary angiograph. Okay, just to now talk about uh, the other artery that I said you could go for. I said that often the femoral artery is used, and this is a nice one to use because it's very simple to guide it up. Well, I've never done it, but I'm told it is reasonably simple to actually guide the tube up uh, into the coronary arteries in the case of the femoral artery. The downside is the femoral artery is a massive great artery, uh, so it's not an ideal one to actually be putting a hole in the side of. The radial artery is the other one that's sometimes used. That's a much smaller artery, but the problem with that one is it's more difficult to actually guide the tube up to where you uh, want it to be, which is the junction where the right coronary artery and the left coronary artery are coming off the aorta. Okay, so let me just remind you of where the radial artery is. So, unfortunately, I can't really do it on this picture because we haven't really got the space, uh, but uh, we need now the uh, superior portion of the aorta back again. So here is the aortic arch again, and remember the main big branches coming off the aortic arch are the brachiocephalic artery, and the left common carotid artery, and then right at the back you've got the left subclavian artery. The brachiocephalic artery is a massive great one, so I'll make it even thicker there, and it splits into the right common carotid artery and the right uh, subclavian artery. So there's this asymmetry here. Uh, in the case of the left common carotid and the left subclavian, they come directly off the aortic arch. In the case of the right common carotid and the right subclavian, they don't come directly off the aortic arch. Instead, they have this brachiocephalic artery that comes off the aortic arch, and they then are branches of that brachiocephalic artery. So just labeling these up, here is the common carotid. Okay, in this case, it's the uh, left common carotid. And here, this one is the uh, left subclavian artery. And then this is the right common carotid and the right subclavian artery. So this is the left subclavian artery. And the common carotid arteries are going to go up and supply the blood to the head, uh, at, whilst the subclavian arteries are going to supply blood to the upper limbs. The last thing that I'll add on to this picture is the description of this one. This is called the brachiocephalic artery, and there's only one brachiocephalic artery, so you don't need to say right brachiocephalic artery because there isn't a left brachiocephalic artery. Okay, so that's the brachiocephalic artery. So, to find the radial artery then, well, the radial artery is in the arm, the femoral artery was in the leg, or, or the femoral artery was in the lower limb, uh, the radial artery is in the upper limb, uh, okay, the radial artery is specifically in the forearm rather than the actual arm, uh, and so we need to follow the subclavian artery, and we'll do it on the right side here. So the subclavian artery, it goes laterally. In the case of the right subclavian artery here, it's going to continue going right. It's going to pass underneath the clavicle, between the clavicle and the first rib below. Uh, and then once it's passed underneath the clavicle, it becomes now known as the axillary artery. Okay, so I'll draw this on here. So I'll try and put the clavicle on here. So this is representing the clavicle, like so. So when it passes underneath the clavicle here, uh, it's now called the axillary artery, and then the axillary artery is going to turn into the brachial artery as it enters the upper limb, and it will firstly initially be in the arm portion of the upper limb, okay, where the biceps muscle is. So now here is the brachial artery. This works its way down the arm, okay, so I'll just lay it up here. This is the brachial artery, and then when it gets down into the forearm, um, it's going to split down into two separate branches, which are the radial artery and the ulnar artery. So this is the brachial artery, like so, and then the brachial artery splits down, once it gets into the forearm, into the radial artery and the ulnar artery. The ulnar artery is the one that would be medial when you have uh, your arm uh, in this sort of position. So I'll just sort of show you the position you need your arm to be in in order for the ulna and the radial artery to be positioned like this. So you're going to have your forearm here, like so. Unfortunately I'm running out of paper here. And then you need to have your hand in uh, with the palm facing forward. So you need to have it like I've got it positioned here. So you'd have your thumb over here and then you'd have your 
other fingers, your little finger would be here, okay, and then your other three fingers here, and then you'd have your thumb over here. Okay, so this would be your palm, so you need to have your uh, arm, your upper limb positioned in that way, okay, and then you'd have the ulnar artery medially and the radial artery laterally. So this artery here, this is the radial artery. So this is the other one that they can gain access to uh, in order to thread a tube up uh, to into the aorta to pump a dye, this radio opaque dye, into the right or left coronary arteries uh, in order to do coronary angiography. Okay, so that's coronary angiography, and what that can obviously do is it can find where the stenosis in the coronary artery actually is. So if you've got someone who is uh, either suffering from stable angina or they're suffering from uh, an acute coronary syndrome and you want to find out where the actual stenosis is, you can do coronary angiography to work it out.